definition because it tells you that wisdom is applying the knowledge you know to get outcomes that you want. So our topic is Jewish wisdom for a universal audience. So 20 years of learning Talmud taught me the first thing we need to do is to define our terms. So what do we mean by wisdom? We've heard other definitions, but the definition that I like to give you is something I saw on a refrigerator once. When people posted things before Pinterest, their fridge on a magnet, it said, knowledge is appreciating that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in your fruit salad. <laughs> now I like that definition because it tells you that wisdom is applying the knowledge you know to get outcomes that you want. Success, success is getting the outcome that you want. And I think that the outcome that's universally wanted by all of us here and perhaps the universal audience is to live happy, fulfilled, meaningful lives. So I don't want to tell you about uh, recipes to make fruit salad, but I would like to share with you the Jewish recipe for successful living. So I like to say that people walk through life and they tend to have the, what I call their big blank. How does it work? They say, I'll be happy when, and then there's that big blank. When I graduate, when I get married, when I can retire. It's funny, but it's, the joke's on us. Because the truth is, I don't care what your big blank is, it's never going to make you happy. People are right that what stands between them and their happiness is their big blank, but not because they don't have it. It's because they're focused on it. You see, if you think about it, the list of things that we don't have is infinite. And what happens is, even if you think that big blank can make you happy, there is no shortage of people who manage to be just happy without it. And for sure, people who have gotten it, most of the time, as soon as they finally get to that milestone in life, what do they say? They say, oh, oops, there's just one more thing I need, and then I'll be happy. So the mistake is focusing on what you don't have. And therefore, the secret is to learn to focus on what you do have. And therefore, that's the, that's the knowledge. Happiness is focusing, will come from focusing on what you, what you do have. But the Jewish wisdom is, ingredient number one for successful living, is gratitude. In Hebrew, hakarat tov, literally that means recognizing the good in your life. And therefore, Jewish wisdom says a person wakes up in the morning, before you even open your eyes, you say, Moda'ani, thank God I'm alive. It's a good start. You get out of bed, you go to the bathroom, you make a blessing, thank you God, King of the Universe, that I have this amazing body and that it works the way it should. It's pretty remarkable. Jewish wisdom says you start your day by counting your blessings. First thing you do, you say, Baruch anosin thank God I live in a universe that has consciousness, that even a bird's brain can tell night from day. And me, my cognitive machinery is so complex, I can make valid decisions, I can decide what's right and wrong in my life. I have a mind. I'm blessed with a mind. You say, Baruch Shalom Sani Aved. Thank God I'm not a slave. I, people are born slaves, but I'm free. Freedom. Baruch Pokeach Ivrim. I could have been blind, but no, I have vision. If you think about it, if you put all the big blanks of everyone in this room on one side of the scale, and all the big blanks of everybody you know on that same side of the scale, and on the other side of the scale, you put any of those things, having a mind, having freedom, having eyes, which side's going to tip? So if we can be bored of having eyes, you better believe we'll be bored with whatever that big blank is. <laughs> and therefore, Jewish wisdom says, step one ingredients for a recipe for living, hakar tatov. Truth is that the Jews take this so seriously that our shulchan aruch, our codification of Jewish law, actually says a person must count at least 100 blessings every single day. That's Jewish wisdom. Learning to have hakar tatov, appreciating the good in your life. Now, we Jews are kind of like Eskimos. You know, Eskimos, they say they have like countless different words for snow because snow is their lives. They have hot snow and dry snow, wet snow and dry snow. If you go to a Jewish wedding, you know what you hear? There's Simcha, Sason, Gila, Rina, Ditza. We have countless words for happiness because we're like happiness connoisseurs. The happiness I'm talking about here is generic, Simcha. Simcha, the noun is Simcha, happiness, the verb, Sameach, to be happy. I'll tell you a remarkable thing. The letters, the word Sameach, is the same letters as the word Chamesh, the number five, the Hebrew number five. Now, we heard someone speak earlier today 
If you know anything about Jewish numerology, there's significant symbolism, Jewish symbolism, there's significance to number six and number seven. Those are considered perfect numbers. Six symbolizes perfection and potential. Seven is the actualization of that potential, the perfected, perfected perfection. But five is, is a lacking number. It's not even perfect, it's less. It's deficient. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think the message is that happiness and lacking are not contradictions. The trick is just focusing Accepting that they're always going to be lacking things, but learning to appreciate what you do have. But that's base level happiness. The truth is we want more than that. We want every kind of happiness, right? So there's something much more intense than that. You know, it's the proverbial winning the lottery, you know, getting the lottery ticket when you have a baby, when you get engaged, or maybe you just win the lottery. So when you win the lottery, how do you feel? You feel like you're ready to jump to the moon. You can't believe your good fortune, and you're so excited. But what's actually changed? You're still the same person you were before. You haven't got the payout. That so why are you excited? Because you're anticipating that from here on out, it's going to be fantastic. That's joy. You're saying, oh my gosh, from now it's going to be great. Forward-looking. And therefore, the second ingredient for successful living according to Jewish thinking is optimism. Now, if you're Jewish and you're attached to the Jewish consciousness, so we don't just have blind optimism. We believe in the creator of the universe who's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, he loves us, and therefore we believe that this is the best of all possible worlds. So we have a great reason to be optimistic. It's a perfect world in potential, but a perfect world, the best it could be up to now. Maybe we still need to actualize that potential, but it couldn't be better given where we are up to now. And therefore Jewish wisdom says, if you're tapped into it, every morning you say, God runs a show. Every night you say, God runs a show. Once a week, we take a whole day off for Shabbat. We say, God runs a show. I don't need to take care of it. It's a perfect world. Once a week, once a year, I should say, a week every year, we move out of our homes on the holiday of Sukkot and we say, God runs the show. It's a perfect world. I don't need to worry about it. I'll let, him, I'll let him do what he has to do and I'll make the best of that perfect world and potential. So we have what's called in Hebrew, bitachon, trust. We trust in God that he is making this the best of all possible worlds. For a person who isn't necessarily convinced that there's a God running the show, so I guess Jewish wisdom would say, make an effort to figure that one out first. But for those of us who do understand there is a God and he is running the show and this is, is the best of all possible worlds, we have every reason in the world to be optimistic. So those two, for, and that leads us to joy. So therefore, those two first ingredients, hakarata tov, gratitude, and optimism, bitachon, trusting that this is the best of all possible worlds because God is running the show, is available to all of us. Just attitudinal shifts. We can all have it. The remarkable thing, the Hebrew word for joy, the noun is sason, the verb, sus, to rejoice. It's the same as the Hebrew, for the, the Hebrew word sheish, the number six in Hebrew. Because that is perfect in potential. Recognizing the world is perfect in potential leads you to that second high level of happiness. But the truth is, while attitudinal shifts are nice and it's available to all of us, all of us know if we've invested time and effort and sweat into anything, our jobs, our artwork, our children, there's no greater pleasure in this world, a deep, lasting pleasure, than having worked hard at something and seen it come to fruition. That's something totally different. And that just can't be just with attitude shift. That requires good hard work. And therefore, the third ingredient in the recipe for successful living is just that, good hard transformational work. In Hebrew, the word is bechira, choosing to overcome your shortcomings, to overcome your inclinations, to overcome your laziness, and make something of yourself. There's a remarkable verse in the very beginning of the Bible, I think one of the most famous, God says, before he creates humanity, let us make man. So who's God talking to? So I, I read a beautiful explanation by Rabbi Avram Tversky. He said, who else could it be? God is the author, and you, humanity, are the audience. The us is me, God, and you, the reader, will collectively, in partnership, make you. God set things up in potential. And he says, okay, now that the setup is there, you have the tools, you have that mind, you have that slice, you have all those blessings, so you... Use your freedom of choice, you use your bechira, you use your good, hard, transformational work, and make something of yourself. Make something of your life. And there's no greater, deeper, satisfying pleasure than that. In Hebrew, that kind of satisfaction is called svia, satisfaction. And by no coincidence, the noun is svia, the verb sovea, the same as the Hebrew word sheva, the number seven. Because seven symbolizes perfection, actualized. And actualizing our potential, taking that world that's perfect, you that's perfect in potential, and actualizing that is the greatest of all possible pleasures. That's the third ingredient. But there's a fourth ingredient. In English, I would call it transcendence. 
But when I say transcendence, you're not thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Because when I say transcendence, you're probably thinking some guy breathing deeply under a Bodhi tree. The holy man who's removed himself from the world and has transcended it all. But that's not the Jewish concept at all. Our notion of the holy man is something totally different. I'll tell you what, I think the most remarkable story in the entire of the Bible. It says that Abraham was 99 years old. He circumcised himself with a rock. And it hurt. And he was suffering. And he was sitting out in his tent and the sun was beating down on him in the middle of the desert. And who came to visit him? God himself. God said, if Abraham's prayer to do this for me, and he is suffering, i got to visit the sick, I will come and commune with Avram. And Avram had one of the rare experiences in life when he actually had a one-on-one -on -one with God, which I would think is the ultimate transcendent experience. But something amazing happens in that story. You know what happens? Abraham looks in the distance. He sees three randoms walking by. He figures, oh, those, are guys. those guys are probably idol worshippers, but they probably need some food. And he says, Hey, God, thanks for coming, but I got to go. And he hangs up the phone, and he runs away from God, leaving God behind, to go take care of three strangers in need. When we say transcendence in Judaism, we don't mean transcending this world and leaving it behind. We mean transcending yourself, understanding there's a lot more in this world than just you, but not at the expense of you, that because you recognize that you are so blessed and this world is so great and you've worked so much on yourself that you feel this overflowing need to give to share, to connect with other. Transcendence of the self, in Hebrew called chesed, this burden is art to give and connect to other. And that is the fourth critical ingredient to a successful life according to Judaism. Remarkably, there's a word in Hebrew for when you're bursting at the seams, when you're, when you're busting out of your own skin. You know what the word that is? When you're oozing out of it? Shmena. You're bursting out, you're bursting, you're bursting every barrier. Same as the Hebrew number for number eight, shmona. That's a transcendent number. Chronic is coming, you'll hear a lot about the number eight transcendence. <coughs> but the truth is, it comes up in countless ways. Even the, the, the Hebrew word for your soul, the vehicle which allows you to transcend, the Shema is the very same letters. The Shemona, Shemona, it's the same idea. So therefore, we said every person wants to live a happy, meaningful, fulfilling life. In Jewish wisdom, is there four ingredients you need. Number one, Gratitude, Akar Satov, recognize the good in your life. Number two, optimism, Bitachon, trusting that this is the best of all possible worlds. Number three, good hard work, Bahira, choosing to overcome whatever besets you, whatever hardships you have, whatever shortcomings you have in your personality, and making something of yourself, transforming yourself. And number four, transcendence, Chesed, bursting out of your own barriers recognizing there's nothing greater in terms of fulfillment and meaning and satisfaction than taking those gifts that God bless you with, transform them, making the most of them, and then using them to share with and give to and connect to others. That's Jewish wisdom for a universal audience. Thank you very much.